Hey there. Well, today we have a, a really exciting guest. Um, this is Jessica Ramotta, who is actually a stylist, and you're kind of probably wondering what the hell has that got to do with money, but it has a lot to do with it. I'm actually, before we start chatting, um, and first of all, sorry, welcome to um, the Sensibility Podcast, Jessica. Thank you for coming along. Pleasure, Amy. Thank you for inviting me on here. It's really exciting. And I love your podcast. I absolutely love it. I think it's interesting that you have um, a variety of topics um, based on the subject of money, which is part of our everyday life. So I love absolutely. it. Absolutely. If we start enjoying it, it just flows better, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, if we improve our relationship with money, a lot of things fall into place. And that's a belief. This is my life's work. Um, but I wanted to get you on the show uh, more about how I transitioned um, and improved my business and everything all by investing in myself. So money is all about investing in either ourselves with what we purchase, investing in time. So break, allowing us more time to do things um, that whether it be getting a cleaner or, or um, you know, in my case, I've got someone who comes and looks after my daughter while I work. Um, and there's obviously money investing in money in, in, in other businesses to make money. Today, we're gonna to be talking about investing in ourselves um, and a few years ago, actually four, maybe five, four, I met you at, I think it, was, it was, feels like a lifetime ago because I've known you for some, might you know, have been five, yeah. I think it was five. Yeah. <laughs> I met you at the AFA Inspire, at an AFA Inspire event and you were talking about how to mix it up and dress corporate and, and sort of also how dressing right can really be a game changer to how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. um, really certainly boosts your confidence. And in fact, in your experiences, help people get um, their promotions in other positions or other contracts and whatnot. Now, the time I had, um, you know, I, I started my business from nothing. You know, I, I was a single mum. I, I actually had to work in a cafe initially just to start up. So I had some cash flow coming in. Um, and it, even though my business at the time we met was doing really well, I was still in this mindset of I'm a single mom, I need to save everything. And I was still ha holding a huge amount of hand-me-down clothes that friends, mm. had, you know, that was still corporate, that was still designer brands and whatnot. But, you know, I, I sort of hadn't really invested in myself or spent money on myself for such a long time. And that comes with the territory of being a mother, but also one who starts up their own business. You've got to be very careful with your cash flow initially. So I bit the bullet. You were very persistent in a good way, not in a, you know, salesy, annoying way, but you were like, all right, we've got these dates. Come on, when are we going to do this? And you were encouraging in a really positive way. So I was like, that's it. I'm doing it. Um, and it was around December time. And I, it was a life changer, a massive game changer for me. It sounds crazy to say that just changing your wardrobe could actually change your life. But what I discovered was... Um, there were times where, I, although I had all this secondhand clothing, I would also go, I have nothing to wear. And I'd mm. go and race out and buy something. And there was never, it was always an afterthought. There was never organisation to my wardrobe. There was never um, understanding that there, there was an importance to invest. So it really changed the way I looked at my clothes. One thing you did was threw out about 70% of my clothing. I remember going, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, the dresses out. Oh, my God. Uh, cleansing. <laughs> it was actually quite um, cathartic and yes. therapeutic and a, a, a beautiful purge actually because you went and then reorganised my entire wardrobe and what was say 30% of my wardrobe became 100% and more because what I would look at a dress, you would look at five outfits. Mm -hmm. You would work with my accessories, you'd work with um, changing the way you did your belt, all sorts of things to, to create that dress three or four times over, which that's where you get your bang for your buck. Yeah. Then we did the shop and that also was a game changer. That was me physically parting with my money outside of say investing in you as a service, parting with my money to buy things that I was going to feel good in. And after this, I felt like I completely blossomed. Besides the fact that the first night you dressed me, I did meet my now husband, um, which is <laughs> That's a story. Right. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that. <laughs> but I really, that, that following year, I really found myself out and about feeling incredibly confident, 
I landed better clients, bigger clients, not, not to dismiss my older clients. When I say that, there was a clientele that I was going for. They were the people I wanted to work with. So there are clients that I've lost along the way because I've worked out who I want to work with. And it helped me by the way I dressed, by the way I presented, this whole experience helped me channel that one, the business person, and mm. two, the people that I wanted to attract. So it was an incredible experience for me. Um, and I, I thought this would be a great opportunity today for you to actually share some of the stories um, but also there's so much to the way looking and dressing can affect this, uh, our psychology, our, 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 the way we present, our confidence and whatnot. So I want to just hand that over to you now. Um, I guess we'll start with working on, you know, some of, the, some of the goals that you work with when it comes to going into someone's wardrobe um, and maybe give some examples. So someone might be have had a baby and their, their weight's changed or they've got a new job. So things like that can really affect us. Mm -hmm. um, but also I think we would, I really would love to tap in on, on investing in ourselves and the whole concept of us, you know, how it really can affect the way we feel about ourselves. Handing that over to you, Mary. Just <laughs> Great. Wow. God, there's, <laughs> You know, we could, we could talk, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. We could talk for days and days. We could break it down. So I'm, yes. just, I'm just so excited to have you yeah. on. Yeah. Long time coming. Thank you. It has, yes. We've been trying to tee this up for ages and now we're finally here. <laughs> we're finally here. Um, look, I think it's the first thing I wanted to touch on, um, and especially when it came to you as well, when you, when you mentioned that you had a lot of hand-me-down clothing and, you know, pieces that your friends had given you. And I think the reason why we threw out 70% was because, um, you know, they were hand-me-downs and they weren't necessarily for Amy. They weren't mm -hmm. for you. And, and that's, and also, you know, that's a very important part of, you know, when I go through people's wardrobes is that first step is the editing. Like, are those pieces actually you? So that's very therapeutic once you find out that they're not for you or they're, they're keepsakes for whatever reasons. Um, and, and when you shop, and generally women shop for two different reasons there's an emotional and there's an impulse so emotional is that depending on the mood you might feel like you know i'm just feeling a bit down or, or something i just feel like i need to pick me up so we'll purchase something and then there's the impulse that you've got to go to an event and that was you know in your case many times that you had to go somewhere so you raced out grabbed something even though you had a wardrobe full of clothes that you you weren't wearing um you purchased pieces at a whim that then you probably didn't wear or only wore once. And that's, that is a common, um, it's a common mistake, I guess, most women make, you know, we wear about 20% of our clothing with 80% sitting there. The other thing too is, you know, what, what the other process of going into wardrobe is, is as you even mentioned is actually, um, once the weeding out happens and then narrowing it down and actually making you know, so many different outfits out of the existing pieces. So what is, is fantastic about a wardrobe edit and a wardrobe style is actually is when is for someone like a stylist to come in who has a very neutral perspective about things and who's not emotionally invested in the client per se to actually give them the truth on what works, what doesn't. So, and that is really, really important because your friends can easily say, yeah, that looks fantastic on you, but they're sort of not willing to tell you the full truth or they're saying things that are really not true. Like they could be saying that looks horrible on you when really the colours look fantastic or something. So having a stylist come in is very much, a, is giving you that, that very um, honest point of view on what works and what doesn't. And this is obviously before, you know, you and I became friends too. So I was completely blunt and I'm still honest with you, I guess, when I'm, you know, when uh, I'm honest with everyone, it's like, no, this doesn't work on you or this could look better in this way. So it's, it's also how you put the pieces together. It's not how much money you spend on your items. It's how you actually put the pieces together, which I think are fundamental, um, 
rules that I stick with. It's, you know, whether your budget is from Zara to or Chanel, it really is not how much you're purchasing for each piece, but it is how you're putting them together. So I think that is, is really important. They're the rules that I like to stick to and also to give options to my clients. So, I mean, first and foremost, I need to get into their heads to figure out what makes them tick and what ticks them off. And, you know, in terms of their whole life, like what is, um, you know, what are things that, you know, are important to them? What are their values? What, um, what their lifestyle is? What their profession is? And the profession is what they do, but it's not who they are. So for me, it's always a matter of figuring out who they actually are as people. And mm -hmm. then... And then working out their outfits to suit who they actually are, who their personality is. Like, for instance, you, you're a perfect example. You're in finance, which is really ultimately a conservative industry, as we know. And generally, when you think of people in finance, you think they're in suits or they're in really dull clothing, um, anything you know, along those lines. Whereas finding out about you, you know, you're an ex jazz singer, you have an incredible voice, you know, you're an artist, you are, you know, you love vintage and you love the old things and you just, you, you really are quirky and creative and you have an edge in your own way. So for me, when I'm working with a, with a client and in your case, working with you, it's like, you, you know, you're in finance, it's what you do, but it's not who you are as a being. And so it was really a matter of organizing your wardrobe and styling you based around who you are as a person. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, yeah. And that's why when that night, when I dressed you up for that night, you were going um, for an industry dinner and you were going to wear a pair of shorts and a, um, and, mm. and it was a Saturday night. Yeah. And, and a blousy top. And I said, over my dead body, you are, you know, I said, you know, I'm just thinking of this, this sexy, gorgeous woman that was in front of me um, who had this, and this is before the shopping trip, but, you know, whatever we had left, there was this, this amount of clothing, this, you know, 10 pieces or whatever. There's this a sexy black dress that I imagined you on a stage, you know, jazz singing. So it was, for me, it was all about who you were. And I was bringing out that, that uh, the old Amy, but bringing it through and, um, and picking through, I think, green accessories and, you know, mm -hmm. fabulous stuff through that. So, and I think what happened is you enclosed it, like you became that, that beautiful soul that you were and it just came through and that's what happened is, um, you know, I really believe on the whole philosophy of the enclosed cognition. So whatever pieces you wear, it's really, really important to be mindful of the pieces that you pick out of your wardrobe every day and wear because it's all about embodying that feeling and how you're wanting to feel and going back to the whole psychology of style and your moods. So... I think it's it's quite a process um, as a personal stylist because, you know, as I just mentioned, it's not just about going through your wardrobe and just culling and saying no, 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 but it's also about knowing that person and where they're at, where they're heading, who they were and whether, you know, it's a matter of, you know, drawing out that almost like that dormant side of them, that creative dormant side of them that they've had sitting there for so long and they've let it sit there because or let it stay dormant because it's, um, you know, children have got in the way or a career has, has got in the way or something like that. So that part I think is very important. And that's where then the money saving comes in as well is because, you know, when you go through a wardrobe and you cull, what the most important thing too is when you go on a shopping trip is you educate the client. And this is what I do. And, and you would have noticed is um, educating you on what is not going to work on you, what you shouldn't be impulsively purchasing anymore and in the end even though the expense initially um you know to hire a star to enlist a stylist and then purchasing new pieces is is high but over the long run it actually saves you money because i mean you don't now impulsively just go out and purchase pieces do you no not at all not at no. all and this is what my clients uh generally all of my clients have said is that they have saved over the long run, they have actually saved far more money because now that they have less in their wardrobe, but they have so many new outfits out of the pieces and they're pieces that they can wear so that they could, it could be, you know, a few blouses, but all of those blouses are worn in about 10 different ways with other bits and pieces. So they've got so many more outfits with the less pieces and then, you know, they're more, they're suited to them. And of mm. course, every season, it's just adding a few extra pieces. And that's what happens with all of my clients is that we'll, we'll do a new season shop 
and then with that um, we'll reinvent those new pieces within the existing pieces and just keep reinventing and reinventing and reinventing and that's where the whole money saving comes in and I guess that's something I absolutely love doing is I'm really passionate about it and I have that eye is to reinvent so the reinvention of new pieces and old pieces just keeps coming through constantly with with clients and that's where um, you know, my clients say that they have not only just saved money, but they just feel better every single time they're in their outfits. They make better business decisions. They walk. Um, like one of my clients, for example, is, um, is the CEO of a company and it's a worldwide company. And she just said since she has started um, enlisting my services, which was probably about two years ago, she said, I just walk into work. I feel far more energetic, I make better business decisions, and I just feel clearer about things. And I thought, wow, you know, it is so powerful when you are, you know, wearing items that, um, that actually really, really look good on you. And because they make you feel good, and then you feel, then people compliment you, or people look at you and go, wow, you know, and it's the compliments that come through. I mean, who doesn't like a compliment? Let's face I, it. I, I <laughs> so, one week, I remember one week in town, I got a compliment every single day. That's amazing. Of like complete strangers, you know, just going from my office to, you know, to the coffee shop or whatever, or going in on the way to a meeting, I'd be stopped and saying, wow, you look fabulous. That's amazing, yeah. that outfit. And you go, thanks, Jess. Yeah. <laughs> and look, it doesn't surprise me because what, what excites me the most is, is seeing my clients glow. Mm. glow 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 it's just like they are you can feel it you can feel their confidence coming through their energy and it just comes through and that is the best feeling on the planet so and if my clients are you know texting me and calling me saying oh my god you know this happened and this happened and opportunities happen you know it's it's proven even that when you are dressing the part and when you are dressed um in the right way, you're sending the right messages and that can open up doors and opportunities because especially if you're in an interview and you're dressed in this, you know, fabulous outfit that is, is really reflects you, um, you know, you've got a higher chance of, of having a more positive interview, whether you get the job or not, than if you're dressed in something that you feel uncomfortable in. And mm. the same if you're going into a business meeting, if you are dressed for the part, dressed for the result that you want to happen, then you are generally going to have that result. So, yeah. you know, it's, the opportunity is the right mindset as well. So exactly. it, there's a physical element to the whole, uh, you know, we, we can go and meditate and we can visualize and we put ourselves in the moment, but to actually then put, you know, it's like putting in our, our armor. It's, it's yes. you know, it's ready, getting really prepared and, and just having that all the time. I mean, look at history and how um, people have dressed or the costumes of um, yes. people have dressed in the past. There's reasons for that. There's, yes. you know, even I was watching a show the other day. I mean, this is a bit off topic, but it's, it's still, similar, you know, relevant. Yeah. Um, Queen's Council where the wigs still to this day. And I Googled, why, why would they wear those, those, there's weird white yeah. wigs for, and it's to maintain the integrity that they are removed from themselves in court to present to, you know, you know, from that legal point of view. So they're, they're not themselves anymore. That's, that is removing them from yeah. that. So when you talk about dress, how you dress me and my personality, that's actually boosting me. That's actually using that's right. going the other way. So it's quite incredible how, um, Dressing can really affect um, a lot of areas. And one for me was I was always afraid of spending money on myself. Mm -hmm. But what I did, when I invested, I realised, one, I was worth it. Mm -hmm. That's really key. Absolutely. We actually are worth, we work hard, we can actually invest in ourselves and enjoy our money. And there's value in that. And when you do that, you're enjoying earning more. Yes. You know, and you're st that actually helps with these money blockages that we've got, you know, when we've got an understanding of how we can value ourselves and it give us permission to spend money on ourselves. That was massive for me. I remember having conversations to you about that. Yes, I remember them clearly. Because this is like my, my work. This is what I do. So it became really clear that I had these money blocks. 
you know, because I'm teaching other people to stop. And I was like, I am actually, it's like the yeah. plumber with a leaky tap. Here I am going, I've got massive money blocks. Yeah. And one of the things was investing in my clothing. And it did change um, a lot about my, you know, around my confidence, as I said, got the right clients on board, um, still, you know, still working on that. But it, it does definitely change you. Now that's sort of where I want to go. The next thing is, probably seen a lot of people really blossom get the jobs get this yes. contract so can you share some of that stuff if you don't mind I'm, I just love hearing these kind of stories yes um well look it's I mean there's always something positive that comes out of a transformation that's what I feel and um one case and I will say is um is a client of mine who's a barrister and she said to me um she said every time she's in court and she has to wear the robes in the week. So you reminded me of that when you were talking about that. And she said to me that when she's in court, she always, um, she always wants to cover up her chest. And even though you wear the robes, but the clothing that she wears under it, because she says she, she genuinely feels attacked from the judge because, you know, there can be a lot of arguing as you know, in court that goes on. So um, she often feels attacked. So she said her chest always needs to feel covered. I said, okay, that's interesting. So her wardrobe always contained dresses that were sort of very um, high cut and, um, you know, nothing that was too feminine. It was always very structured and structured jackets. And so I said, okay, and I had to think about this and I suggested to her, why don't we soften it then? So even though everything was just structured and it was dark colours and, um, there wasn't anything interesting to them. So what I did was I introduced things like um, frills and bows, high collared bows around the neck and a little bit of colour, um, interesting colours that would suit her. I also introduced a few you know, accessories like necklaces. And it's something that she had just never done before. And so when we introduced that, um, and she also was, you know, very open to creative exploration because she just said, I'm done with this whole boring sort of corporate law type of feel. And it was interesting that when I introduced all of that with her wardrobe, she just felt like a different person. And she said that um, quite a few times after that, that she would go into court, put her robes on, and she might have worn like a frilly blouse or a, or a tie blouse. And she just said it made her feel completely different, did not make her feel attacked. So it's interesting to note that this, that's what I'm saying, it's the symbolic reasons behind wearing clothes. It's in clothes cognition. So she felt softer. There were bows, there were frills. It wasn't harsh. Mm -hmm. So it gave a very different feel. So that's one example I can say that really has um, symbolically, and I mean, it really emotionally changed her, her attitude in court as well. Um, I've had um, clients who, who definitely like have started new positions um, and they have walked into these, you know, companies and people have just, you know, really like taken them on and just complimented so much on what they're, they're, what they're wearing to the point that it has also influenced them on their dress sense. So, you know, one client said that, you know, everyone was sort of in the office wearing, you know, very dull and, and corporate sort of colors. And she would just go in dressing, um, you know, fabulously in, in something a bit interesting or with an interesting cut dress. And because she was receiving so many compliments, they were all just starting to think, oh, you know, maybe we can change the way we're dressing too. And that she said slowly but surely they were coming in dressing a little bit different as well. So you're also influencing other people with with your confidence and how you walk um, walk into work. And one such case was a man that I styled and he was um, general manager of a, of a um, corporation. And during COVID, they basically, you know, a lot of the staff would, were, um, you should say, stood down. So who were left with the general managers and a few of their staff? And there were general managers around Australia. So he was leading a Sydney company. And he would, um, he said, you know, the morale really dropped. And people were coming into work just feeling, ugh, because there were less people in the office. And also because they were insecure and not sure if their jobs were going to last. Mm -hmm. And he said, and even at that time, they all had to take it, the general managers had to take a 20% pay cut. And he said, you know, I couldn't really justify paying um, to get a stylist and a whole new wardrobe, but he had these old suits that he'd been wearing for the last 10 years and he hadn't had a wardrobe update for years and years. And you know what? He rung me and he said, 
I'm just going to do this. I would like a style session and I'd like a whole new wardrobe. And I thought, fantastic. So um, completely culled his wardrobe. He had absolutely, everything was just horrible in there. So pretty much threw it out. It was just so old. And he was a young, uh, a young, quite a young man as well. So he wasn't, um, you know, he wasn't older in any way, but he was, um, you know, he was young at heart and, and he was a fantastic man. And took him shopping, dressed him up, he was a completely changed person in modern clothing. He looked absolutely fantastic. And he said, you know, he was texting me off and just saying, I just feel so different. He says, I'm walking with a skip in my step. I'm going into work feeling a lot more positive. And he was uplifting all the staff around him to feel more positive because of the way he was dressing mm. and he was feeling different. And he said to the point that even when he got on Zoom calls with the other general managers around Australia, they started going, oh, what are you doing? Where are you going? Are you going for a job interview? You're looking very sharp. What's that jacket? What's that pocket square you're wearing? So they were commenting on his, on his clothing to the point where, again, um, as I was saying with the other client, that they then, on the next Zoom call, they then started dressing up yeah because he was giving off that vibe of you know no I just want to feel fantastic because I was feeling crap so he was a perfect example of during this whole COVID where he decided to knit to really upgrade and to feel better and it completely changed his life and he said it's changed the whole work dynamics now his staff go in better dressed he, the general managers around Australia go in better dressed so it's it really does improve not just yourself but also the people around you and I think that's what's really important um, you know they're just you know a couple of examples but you know everyone that I guess I, I work with just tells me in so many different ways how they feel their lives have improved um, you know in terms of their every day so I think I think it's a positive. I think it's a win-win. It's a positive. And, and like I said, this man, he had taken a 20% pay cut, but still went and invested in a stylist. And he said it was just the best thing he's, he's ever done. Yeah, I have to say it was one, of, it's definitely up there with one of the best decisions I've ever made when investing in myself, for sure. I want to actually, um, I don't know if people can see, if I've got my phone, but on my phone, in my, I've got an album of every style that Jessica will do. So for example, you see, if you're on YouTube, you'll see this, if otherwise you're listening, you can just imagine uh, there's a blue dress and I have ways of wearing that blue dress and then there's a white dress and it goes on. But, um, and I'll just scroll and there's just, I've got the never ending wardrobe or different seasons, because I've had a, set, a few sessions with, <laughs> with yeah. just, just the one. <laughs> Um, a few different seasons um, and it just and then you've got events and things that you know then we'll do uh, a, a session just around okay it's spring carnival what are we going to do with that or I've got black tie events what can we do with the wardrobe because I don't want to have to go and buy new ball gowns or whatever and also just um, help me buy my wedding dress so you know there's there's mm. a lot there but so there's a lot that you see the the value is just endless in respect to how much you can get out of your wardrobe with hiring or investing in a stylist um, to, to, to really make the most of it. Now, I guess not everyone can access you. Um, so I would love you to share some really key, I will just focus on female wardrobe for now and then we'll talk sure. maybe men, but just some key things like some maybe essential items or things that you think would add value to uh, or worth investing in when it comes to your wardrobe? Okay, yeah, that's a good question because, um, you know, people's you should, uh, key pieces can also vary. But I guess one of the most important things I always say is, is and I think every stylist would say that is a great black dress. Um, and I really believe in, in, in a wrap dress. And the reason why I say a wrap dress is because it's flattering on pretty much most body shapes, you know, where, whether you're an hourglass or whether you, you know, the pear shape or um, um, apple shape, the, the wrap dress is incredibly flattering and there's all different styles of wrap dresses. So for me, I always think a wrap dress on most body shapes is, is fabulous. Um, I always think also, um, I would say a beautiful skirt. So, you know, lovely skirts. And I think for every body shape as well, there's so many different ones. You've got pencil shapes and you've got, you've got a line. So in, in terms of the, the, um, the, the key pieces in your wardrobe do vary, but I always say a fabulous black wrap dress 
and colour is very important. I think it's really important to introduce some colour. So, so many people who, who have been wearing black, 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 and then as soon as they introduce colour, they just go, wow, you know, this is really different. So, it's really important to actually hone in on what colours actually suit you, whether they're greens or blues or, or purples or, or, you know, beautiful yellows and citrus colours. So, it's really important to inject some, some really beautiful, colourful pieces into your wardrobe um, for those, you know, special days where you just want to feel alive and vibrant. And accessories is also an important thing. So I always say go with accessories. Accessories are so understated. So if you are a person that just has black throughout your whole wardrobe, which is fine, I always say add in your accessories, whether it's some, some scarves or whether it's brooches or necklaces or earrings, because you can really elevate um, any any outfit with just that little bit of accessorizing, whether it's a belt around the dress, um, whether it's a scarf around the neck or, or a scarf around your waist. Accessories are a very cost effective way to actually, you know, lift up an outfit. Like a, even that simple black dress, that one core black dress you have in your wardrobe can actually be worn several different ways with different accessories. So that's something I've always been a really big fan on. And um, it doesn't have to be overly you know accessorized like not lots of jewelry or big statement earrings i like to wear big statement earrings and lots of jewelry but that's me but a lot of my clients don't so but it could be those simple things like even the, the barrister i was talking at about before she um, never really wore accessories before but now she actually loves wearing some you know some necklaces and some brooches and things because she says it just you know, it's sim they're symbolic as well and it has interest and it's also talking pieces. Um, mm. So that's something really important. So I always say the wrap dress, accessorizing and also adding some colour in some sort of way, whether it's a statement colour, an accent colour, a scarf or, or some accessories with that. So those, I think those three things are, are quite basic. And in terms of your capsule wardrobe, with, you know, with your, with your bits and pieces, I think that varies I am not the sort of person to say, you need to have like three basic t-shirts, you need to have two jackets, you need to have two skirts and whatever. I just, I don't do that. I mean, that to me is, is what I call cloning. That's basically saying, you know, you just want to be like everyone else. Yes, I think your basics are important. And I think, like I said, I think a wrap dress can really, you can dress it down, you can dress it up. Um, a beautiful skirt in some form, whether it's an A-line or a pencil, again, um, and a blazer is also fantastic, but it doesn't have to be your cookie cut blazer. It can be mm -hmm. something that's a little bit interesting that can be that can be worn, you know, in various ways. So that's why I say, you know, your capsule wardrobe, just be very careful as you've just got to have the pieces that work fantastically on you. And from there you build on that. And that is with mm -hmm. color and that is with accessories. So um, they're probably the main tips, but it's also really important is also to edit your wardrobe frequently. Um, and I say that and I, and I say frequently and ruthlessly because it's um, really important that you see the items in your wardrobe so that you will wear them. If your, uh, if your items are jammed and you've got things folded here and thrown there, you're not going to wear your pieces and that's why it's important to edit them. Um, and I'm also of the belief that I know that a lot of stylists will say that if you haven't worn anything in 18 months, toss it. Sometimes you haven't worn that piece because you've purchased it on a whim and, you've, and, it, and, it looks, and you know it looks amazing on you, but you've but it's quite a statement piece. And the reason why you purchase it is because you're thinking one day I'll wear this when I've got the courage to wear it. And what will happen is you may not have the courage to wear it for six months or 12 months. And after 12 months, all of a sudden you will wear it. Or you may need someone to encourage you to wear it. It could even be a stylist that you will list that comes in and says, you know, why haven't you worn this off? Because I'm too scared to. Well, I'll show you how to wear it, you know. And then someone, you know, that stylist will show you how you can wear it and give you the courage to wear that. So... Um, be careful of, you know, those sort of statements of throwing something out that you've had for a long time you haven't worn. It could be that you just haven't had the courage to wear it or the know-how how to wear it. So mm. therefore you can need, you know, guidance with things like that. So I can sometimes go against the what the rules are because I my my philosophy is there are no rules when you have your own style. But of course, when it's something that's outdated and you haven't worn for a while, yes, of course, you know, I'm, I'm going to suggest that you, that you definitely, you know, toss things like that. So... Mm. Yes. And being ruthless, that's not always easy for some. So it is helpful to have someone like you come in um, and give guidance on that because you've done that for me a couple of times. Now, that 
leads me to another question. We have been in this pandemic for some time and we don't know when the end is going to happen. So we've all had to pivot our businesses and do things differently. Now, I've been, you know, because you're a personal friend of mine as well, I know that you've done some changes in your business. Can you share with me and with us how you actually now consult and deal with your clients? Because, I mean, you're probably not going into people's homes as much um, and you're actually working with people all over the world. I know you did, yeah. you've travelled overseas several times over the last few years for, to see clients. Mm -hmm. So that's all got to stop. How, do you, how are you operating now? Right. Yes, it has changed. Gosh. Um, what I do is, yes, I was travelling a hell of a lot. And I, that just stopped, obviously, with, with COVID. So based in Sydney, it's online. I think what everyone has gone is, is virtual. So I still service my clients interstate and overseas, and that is through a virtual sense. The other thing, too, that has changed is that because a lot of people ended up having to work from home, um, their style changed. They weren't necessarily needing to dress up and go um, what, what they would normally wear to work. So then they were calling and saying, well, how do I dress from home without actually being in my PJs or my active wear? And of course, I'm a real advocate of that too. It's like, even if you are working from home, it's really important to, to dress up from head to toe, not just from the bottom down, um, because there's also been a lot of statistics with that is, you know, from head to toe, it's basically you're half in, you're half out. You don't, you're not fully concentrating because you're just thinking, I just need to do this for, for the Zoom call, but it's not necessary what I'm wearing on the bottom. I mean, there's, there's so many gifts that, um, you know, so many jokes that went around and photos that went around of people half dressed and they were funny. They were absolutely funny, but mentally, and psychologically, they, they're actually not that um, beneficial for you. Is they made school kids where, well, a lot of schools, not all of them, but a lot yes. of were needing to wear their school uniform, if you. not their sports uniform. Just yes. to be in uniform changes their headspace. That's exactly right. It's exactly right. Look, even for me, I was working a lot from home and doing these these um, Zoom calls, and and I was always dressing up head to, and I still do, like it's just who I am anyway. But dressing head to toe, it wasn't a, ma a matter of you know just dressing from the top part up, and I would always feel fantastic. I felt like I was delivering a much clearer and better messages across to my clients. Like there were some calls that I was on where. Um, you know, I had gold maxi skirts on. Now, my clients could never see what I had down the bottom and I wasn't showing them, but I felt amazing. And it really is all about your own um, headspace and where you are. And so, and this is what I was teaching um, to my clients as well when I was doing these, these um, style sessions online is saying that regardless of whether you're working from home, you must dress from head to toe. And so what we were doing was re-looking at their wardrobes and they weren't really purchasing anything. It was purely just re-editing. It was, it was um, again, it was just, you know, being creative with the pieces in there and looking at their more casual piece and saying, right, how can we elevate those casual pieces? And it could just be putting, you know, a fantastic jacket over, you know, some nice sort of casual pants without their without them being sweatpants or activewear. Um, but, you know, and just adding accessories. And that's a big thing too, is accessorizing has become a, a, quite a, a novelty for a lot of people since doing these uh, video, video calls because they probably never wore accessories before, but now they're going, oh, you know, we've got to sort of brighten up and look a little bit better on, on calls. So, and that's what people are um, doing. I was just on a, on a call before you with my marketing um, um, woman based in Melbourne and she got completely dressed up with the big earrings and the necklace because she, she knew she was having a session with me. She looked fantastic and it was great. So, um, you know, it's things like that. I think that's where it's probably changed a bit is that their style had, had gone a little bit more casual. But at the same time, I was saying, you know, just think that you're still in the office and that's what's really important is trying to get them to still dress up every day but in comfortable ways. Um, and then, yes, online definitely... Um, servicing all of my clients online has been a really big step. And I, you know, I also took the time during COVID to actually also shift things for me. Like I, I redid, um, enlisted a web designer to redo my website, um, a marketing person. So it was also a good thing for me. That was a time of uh, that word pivot. Here we go. Um, to do things for my business. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's worked perfectly. I mean, I actually, embraced it I thought it was actually quite nice was it something different 
And so I also know just you sort of do I, I saw, uh, Facebook or something that you, you're doing, um, like virtual sessions. So do you do group sessions or you're just doing one-on-ones? Um, interesting you say group sessions because that was the call with my marketing person before is I'm going to start a Facebook group. And it's going to be like a private group and it'll be a paid group where it's going to be, um, I'll be discussing with the people who want to be a part of it, how they can pretty much take their style to another level, but still be comfortable and affordable because people have a misconception that, you know, you know, dressing up is uncomfortable and can be unaffordable. And that's absolutely not the case at all. So, you know, you can still, you know, dress up every day like you're going to a party, but it can still be fantastic and great. So it's a matter of just like doing it for yourself. Um, so this Facebook group is going to be covering a lot of grounds. It will be covering, you know, what, how to, how to dress with that edge and how to wear certain things and how to use accessories for this or how to wear that black dress in so many ways. It, it's, it's just going to be um, quite interesting with the Facebook group that I'll be setting up and it'll be part of that. But virtual styling, I do, yeah, virtual um, online style consultations. So people that don't know me um, can book in for, there's two different um, services that I have. And they, it can either be a, you know, pretty much like a, a, a chat where for one hour we chat about their style needs and then they'll send photos through um, of their body shape and also pieces that they, they have existing in their wardrobes. And then what I'll do is I'll put together like a, I call it the treasure map um and links to you know items that they that you know they could purchase um to complement their existing pieces and also shops and brands that they could actually look at for themselves for their body shape so it's really extensive um and then the second one is um is is choosing five of their outfits and i would show them ways that they can actually elevate those five outfits so basically it's five outfits bringing to life um, so that's a couple of different online style sessions that I do have. Otherwise, my existing clients will just um, will book in for sessions that um, because I know them and I know their wardrobes, then we'll just go through that and just reinvent and continually just come up with some new outfits that are that suit them for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there seems to be a bit of a turnaround, like a pivot. Uh, no that word again. <laughs> um, there's a turnaround because now that there's sort of people are coming out of lockdown well not in victoria yet but and there's a lot of people that are screaming to just feel and look different so they're also not wanting so much to be in their casual wear anymore um and they're wanting to dress up mm -hmm. and and i am a big you know i encourage this 100 percent. always have as you know me it's like dress up as though it's a party every day and um you know i always think you know regardless of how you know if you've got a beautiful ball gown sitting in your wardrobe it's like you know wear it at home have a dinner party and wear it even if it's just two of you you know wear it so and, and people are really embracing that because the whole dinner party scene now has become in quite explosive instead of going out to restaurants they're having them at home so people are wanting to dress up a little bit more and they don't care if they're wearing their you know their fabulous you know dress that has has just been sitting there for a couple of years so i think that's what's really nice too is they're drawing out other pieces and and pieces they've had there for a while and they're wanting to dress up a bit more so that's sort of coming a full circle which is really nice yeah um, what I was going to, I've just had a mental blank then <laughs> because I was thinking, I was thinking of the dinner, part, like dinner party and we should do that. Yes, um, and, definitely. <laughs> we we have to dress up in like, you know, a tie of, I can't see bread in a, in a black tie. <laughs> this has not been about me. This is all about what, like trying to you know, spread this message about investing in yourself and I know. About the way you dress and here I am going. Dinner party, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> oh, sorry, you, I did just go completely off top topic there. Um, it is interesting though because that's what people are doing. As people are going out for to restaurants as well, but we're limited with what we can do because of COVID, um, and you have to book so far in advance for dinners and whatnot. So yeah, I think that's why the trend is let's do dinner at home, and we invite a whole, you know a limited number of friends so we've got a table that seats eight quite comfortably with social distancing you've been over for lunch you've yeah. experienced that and um we're doing that quite often you know so yeah. you know any chance now it is you're right i'm sick and tired well i had a baby you know nine yeah. months ago so i'm missing wearing 
you know, my accessories and dressing up. And I'm sick of wearing like what I feel like is my PJs, my active wear. Mm. Um, so I'm starting to dress up and sit at my office. And, you know, your influence has definitely rubbed off on me because um, it was just after you guys come over for lunch that I went and I got dressed for the day, came down, very productive. And this was a day where um, we had Abby looking after Gracie so I could be at my desk. And my husband and Abby both looked at me and went, are you, have you got meetings? Where are you going? What yeah. are you doing? Are you got meetings? Yeah. I'm like, I'm working. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm so uh, glad you did that. <laughs> I, mean, some, I mean, I always sort of would do, I did the cheeky yeah. thing. And I yeah. put it, I Most people have. You know, I've got a lot of those, uh, uh, you know, my, my, my basic capsules, witchery, those witchery dresses. Yes. Because they got me through my pregnancy. So that's sort of like my go-to. So witchery dresses are so great because I can dress them up, dress them down, put sneakers on with them, and they always look yeah. stylish. So if I'm going to have a Zoom meeting, it's usually a witchery dress. And now yeah. the fact is that I've worn them so often through pregnancy and beyond, uh, I feel like it's become my uniform and I'm actually not, I feel like, the, you know, I need to, spice things up again so I, I i've stopped wearing wearing skirts wearing different tops and you know changing it up and it really does make a big difference to how your productivity your yeah. confidence how you feel about yourself and you know anyone who's had a baby your body changes so dramatically it mm -hmm. takes a while to bounce back especially when you're over 40 um yeah. that I have struggled with how I've looked at myself. And so it's been really nice over the last few weeks just to go, I'm going to revamp my wardrobe. And having learned a lot of these skills from you, I would have had no idea years mm -hmm. ago. You know, I had no, I thought I was stylish. Well, actually, no, that's not true because you do have your, you do have your own style and you are stylish, but it's all I did was I um, bought out the part that was dormant. So mm -hmm. it, it it just basically reinvigorated it, and that's what I was saying before. Is a lot of people have so many dormant, dormant um, qualities, and it's just a matter of drawing that out. And you know, it's all I do is I draw that out through the use of clothing, which yeah. is a really big part because your outer and your inner are pretty much the same. It's just a matter of sewing that. Like anyone who you know, people who continue to say it's all about the inside and that's what matters, and I don't care about what I look like on the outside. I will definitely always argue that because I think it's really important that what is going on inside you bring through the outside. You know, and you can see like when people are feeling down and depressed and their lives aren't going, it shows on the outside. Whereas it's really important to really show who you are, what's coming through with what you, um, you know, with what you're wearing. And, um, and clothing is, is, is a great tool for that. And that's, mm. and that's what it is. But it's also the use of how you were wearing that clothing. So rather than just wearing the cookie cut, what everyone else is wearing, you could take that one piece and make it in your own special way. And that's what it's all about. Um, so it's really important. And as you said before, you know, you just feel, you know, you feel great. You feel like you're clearer when you're dressing up a little bit more. And it's something that I came up with at an event that I spoke at a couple of weeks ago called the fifth element. Um, because especially during COVID, we have, Everyone is, is, is talking about, you know, the experts and the psychologists talk about how, you know, for our mental well-being, it's so important to exercise and eat nutritiously and get good sleep. And these are all very important. Meditation, you know, there's a lot of that and a lot of these apps that have come out and stories in the media and YouTube. All of those things are really important. But there's one, one very simple, basic, ancient old ritual technique that people are not talking about, and that is just dressing up for an instant mood boost. Yeah, 100%. And I call it the fifth element because, you know, your first is, you know, is, is exercise or uh, not in any order, but exercise and there's nutrition and then there's good sleep and there's meditation. But then the fifth I say is, is dressing up. So it's something that I feel is really important is when you, are, have, when you wake up and you feel like, ugh, like, you know, you, you have had many sleepless nights because of Gracie and you've woken up going, oh, so, you know, the last thing you want to do is dress up, but it could be the best thing you do to actually lift your mood so all you do is go into your wardrobe and go right what is my favorite color and I know one of your favorite colors is green so you could easily just go and pick out a green dress and go right I need to feel alive I need to feel you know I've got this meeting today what is it all about so blah 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 and as soon as you put on something that makes you feel great and that you love it gives you an instant boost and there's so much scientific proof 
around this, but people are overlooking at it. They're overlooking it, sorry. And they're not recognizing the importance of just putting on something that makes you feel great. And it instantly will just, it's not going to solve your problems. It's not going to make the big issues go away in life, but it is just going to help your day, which then is a knock on effect. Because what happens when you're feeling good, as you said, Brett gives you a compliment, you go, Oh, yeah, yeah, that's nice, you know. And, uh, you know, if you're out for the day, and someone else looks at you, so they're admiring what you're outfit, you're feeling good. And then because you feel good, then you're also paying other people compliments or seeing the lovely things in life and the beautiful things because you're feeling great. Mm. And that's how I see it is, it's not, there's nothing fickle about dressing in what makes you feel great. It's actually a really important part of um, self-care. I agree. I agree. Which brings me back to why I wanted you here is that, you know, um, investing ourselves is part of self-care. Um, dressing up is part of self-care. We are in a society, in a culture where there is an expectation to look and away a certain way um, and to dress a certain way to behave a certain way. Um, so yeah. it, well, now we're in a new world where a lot of this is virtual online, but it doesn't need to stop there. Yeah. You know, um, I believe that there's, you know, it hasn't actually been lost. In fact, this is a great opportunity. As I said to you before we started recording, we were at, uh, we were on the lawn at the races last Saturday mm. and there were these beautifully dressed women. And um, I'm always following, um, other race pay, you know, people around the country. And one is in, um, in Melbourne and she has this virtual um, fashions of the field. Sorry, I'm just mental because I'm looking at my phone. She's had a fashions of the field competition. And this woman who is two metres away from me in Sydney on the lawn, one was a, you know, like 50 or right. one of five of the top five country wide on fashions field. Now we're the only ones that are going to the races. I know, sorry, Brisbane's going to the races as well, but um, you know, those in Victoria aren't. So they're dressing up at home and they're getting involved. I mean, when we were in lockdown, we would get dressed up, go on the balcony, I'd set the computers and everything up on the balcony, champagne bucket, the whole bit. The neighbors across the way would dress up on their balcony and you know, verandas, and we would wave at each other, would actually fully dress up. And it, it was then become it became something that we started to look forward to. Mm. Oh my God, Saturday's coming! Oh, it's Friday! Woo woo! We've That's got Saturday right. coming. Because when you're in lockdown, you're in the house seven days a week. Mm. But nothing, you know. Weekends, it's the same as Monday. You know, it's you. You forget. Oh, oh, I don't have to load up the computer. I have to work on Saturday and Sunday. But I'm still in the same environment. I'm still around the same people. I'm not going anywhere. So I really think that this is actually a really great. Call you know, topic yes. and very relevant to people who are actually in lockdown, who are actually um, feeling a bit yuck about everything because you're not, you know, dressing up or, you know, feeling That's good. That's right. You're looking forward to something. Yes. So, yeah, I just think maybe find a virtual um, party and get dressed up. That's exactly right. And the, yes, exactly. Have a dinner. You know, there's, there's no reason why you can't. And this is where that's investing in yourself. So it doesn't yeah. have to be physically a financial transaction. And that's, that's right. what I wanted to show when I showed my phone with all of the photographs. I would say mm, the first, first two sessions we did, I didn't buy, I didn't spend a cent except investing in your service. Right. Um, but I think 80% of those photographs were already existing items that we revamped in different ways. And then when I did purchase things, it sort of stretched my wardrobe to That's be... That's exactly right. Well, people just think I have a never-ending wardrobe, except this last year when they've seen me in the same with tree dresses a million times over. <laughs> Apart from that, if you have met me a year ago, I was always wearing something different. I remember I heard my office in the city and the girl at reception always complimented me. And she goes, I've never seen you in the same outfit. And I'm like, oh, yes, you have. I just wear it differently. That's exactly right. And she goes, really? I said, I invested in a stylist. And she went, oh, you've got a stylist? Oh, my God. You must be <laughs> and I'm like, well... <laughs> Effort is an investment. I think it actually is part of my journey to be successful, mm. to be a success within myself. Mm. I felt that I needed to 
expand my horizons in when it came to my wardrobe and whatnot. So I had this conversation with this girl and she was, you know, she was very young and just, you know, very starry eyed. And it was quite sweet of her to have, you know, always compliment me when she understood. And then I would come in through the lift and I'd go, see, this is the same skirt I wore last week, but I've just jazzed it up differently. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, there you go. See, that's, yeah, and that's, that's what it's all about. It's actually having fun with your wardrobe as well. So it's, it's, it's reinventing, reinventing existing pieces um, and that's part of the whole investment. So you don't feel like you feel like you've got something new on every day, but you haven't necessarily got something new on every day. So Absolutely. and that's what's really important. That's what's that's really right. important. Look, I, we could honestly talk. I know. We said we could talk for days. <laughs> I'm back on um, in a couple of weeks because I would like to more, for, from a not a stylist point of view, mm -hmm. but as a business and an entrepreneur, um, okay. we're going to talk because there's going to be a few. I'm going to do a series on how people have really changed their businesses during um, COVID. And, you know, it could really propel people, I believe, We've always got to look at the silver lining. And in this situation, going digital has actually opened the world up to our fingertips, basically. Um, so I would love to get you on. I'm not sure whether I'm going to do that with a panel or if it's just going to be you. But um, so keep in mind, this isn't the last time you're going to see Jess. I also <laughs> want to encourage Jess maybe to do a webinar with our followers because think if you could actually show and demonstrate some of yes. the things. Like you did when we did the AFA Inspire yep. a few years ago. Yes. Um, we could possibly do that. Um, so, yeah, we, this isn't the last time you're going to be on the show. And I want to thank you so much uh, for your time today. Um, now, can you just, before we go, just tell people how they can get in touch with you? Uh, yes. Um, it's basically through my website. So it's, it's jessicamarmotta.com and that's Jessica with a G. So G E double -S, S I C A marmotta.com or even my Instagram account. It's at style by Jessica. Again, it's G E double -S, S I C A. So yeah, like reach out. Um, if you're wanting just even a revamp or anything like that, that's, you know, how you can, how you can get hold of me, whether you're in Sydney face to face or, um, anywhere around the world, basically. But yes, it's I been know. absolute fun. Sorry. Oh, I'm just going to cut you off there. Sorry. No, it has been. I've had a ball. Um, I want to encourage everybody to jump on the Instagram page because um, Jess often posts uh, like sort of editorial. Style creations. Style, yeah. yeah. And they're just fantastic. It's just, it gives you a bit of inspiration, um, you know, and I'm, I'm always looking at going, where did she's come from? Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they are. They purely are inspirations. I mean, some of the, the, um, the curations on there can be, you know, they could be Gucci's and Valentino's and things like that because I just get them from so many different websites. But it's purely about inspirations and you can often find um, items that are almost the same but of more affordable um, prices so and that's the whole thing about style as well as you know you can you can set it within your own budget so you can look like a million dollars even on Zara and it that's what's interesting about it so um, yeah those style curations are purely for inspirations and um, a lot of people say that they'd love to go on and just be inspired on oh you know I could do that <laughs> you've taken me into Target H&M Zara <laughs> we did a session with Channel 10 last that's year right. that's yeah really Year before, I think, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking amazing on a budget. So you can really do so much. Um, so those who are saving, you know, frantically for their first home or wanting to pay off their mortgage or, or sort of really their money's going somewhere into their future and they sort of don't feel like they can or, or should be spending on themselves, mm -hmm. there are ways around it. There are so many ways around looking Absolutely. at it, feeling amazing and still saving and still being frugal. Yes, 100%. 100%. This has been great. <laughs> I look for <laughs> We could go on for hours, couldn't we? Um, I look forward to the next time, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Jess. That's a pleasure. I'll chat to you soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're okay. welcome. Okay.